So Google has just dropped one of the biggest updates to Notebook LM so far, and it's completely free. And this update takes Notebook LM to a completely different level where you can now create professional podcasts, explainer videos, multilingual content, interactive notebooks, and shareable workspaces all directly from your sources. So in this video, I'm going to break down the five biggest new features, showing you how they work and give examples of how you can use them for studying, research, content creation, or business. So so let's get started. So let's start off with one of the biggest updates in Notebook LM, which is in audio overview. So if we click here on the edit button, it will open up and you'll see that you now have four different formats for your podcast. So you can choose from deep dive, which is a lively conversation between two hosts or brief, a bite-sized overview to help you grasp the core ideas from your sources quickly, critique an expert review of your sources, giving you constructive feedback to help you improve your material or debate where you actually get the two hosts start debating the different points in your sources. And what you'll find here is that Notebook can now support 80 different languages. So you can choose to have your podcast in any one of these languages. And you can also customize whether you want it to be a shorter podcast or the default medium length or a longer podcast that goes into more detail. And you will see here that you also have a custom box where you can actually direct the hosts to speak about certain parts from your sources. Now, in order to test some of these features, I want to show your workflow that I found really useful when I'm using these different types. So if we come over here and create a new notebook, and I'm just going to go straight away to discover sources, and I'm going to say I'm interested to learn about brain computer interfaces, and I'm going to submit that. And you'll see it's come back with a whole load of different sources from websites, Wikipedia, how stuff works, also some journal articles and so on. So I'm just going to import all these sources for now. And once I've imported these sources, I'm now going to go to my audio overview. And now because I've actually imported a wide variety of sources. I'm not going to go to deep dive. I'm going to start off with brief just to get a feeling for what my sources contain. And then I'm, I'm going to choose the language English. Okay. And because at this stage, I'm still learning about these sources. I have no idea what they contain. I'm just going to add the custom instruction here that says, give me a simple overview of brain computer interfaces, explaining what they are, how they work in practice and their main current uses. And then I'm going to generate my podcast. So now my overview is ready. So if we play that, you can see that it's a two minute podcast because I've mentioned that I wanted it brief. And if we play a part of that, this is the brief on brain computer computer interfaces. Okay, so brain computer interfaces, you know, BCIs, they're this really exciting tech creating a direct link. So you can see that in the podcast, it's taking a very explanatory way of starting, defining what these brain computer interfaces are. And then it goes on to answer the specific question that I've asked it in my prompt. So I want to show you when I would use the deep dive mode. So in this case, I'm going to start off by uploading this entire book, which is an 82 page book on brain computer interfaces. And now I want it to start exploring these detailed topics and to give me an extensive deep dive of the actual content. So now I'm going to upload my book. Okay, and you can see it's added at the top. Now I don't want the rest of the sources. I'm just going to make sure that only the book is selected. Again, I'm going to go to audio overview and this time I'm going to keep the deep dive. Now in the focus, I want to add a custom instruction here that says focus on the key themes of the book, group chapters into themes, explain the main points of each theme and give one example per theme. And this time I'm going to go a bit longer because I know the book is actually quite long and extensive. And you can see how I've adjusted these different settings based on the source that I'm selecting. And now I'm going to generate. So you can now see that the deep dive podcast is ready. And if we click on that, that is actually 57 minutes long. So and if we play that. Imagine just for a moment, being able to move a cursor across the screen, maybe type an email to a loved one, or even uh, create intricate art without lifting a finger, without speaking a word just with the you know sheer power of your thoughts. It sounds like something straight out of a science fiction blockbuster, doesn't it? But what if I told you it's not just fiction, but a rapidly unfolding reality, already transforming lives and pushing the very boundaries of human potential. This isn't just a textbook, it's uh, really a foundational map to a whole new frontier. And you can already sense that a completely different tone that this podcast is taking. It's adapted to this formal nature of the book. And as we play the podcast, it's going in depth in the themes. It's more academic in the way it's tackling the subjects completely different from the brief overview that the first podcast came back with. We'll uncover the intricate science behind how these systems actually work, explore their surprising and often profoundly moving applications from life-changing medical interventions to artistic expression and you know, next generation gaming. 
and will peek into the ethical considerations and future possible and you can see that it's already responded to the instructions that I gave it about focusing on the main themes in the book. And when I listened to parts of this podcast, I was just absolutely blown away by how it was actually able to put together these different themes. So this is one thing I would definitely encourage you to do if you want to get in-depth information from a textbook, from an extensive report, for example, that you're working with. So another way I like to use the critique and debate is to upload a research article and then find the main arguments and the challenges in the article. So we're going to again start off by adding our source and this time I'm going to upload a research paper on the actual ethical challenges of the brain interfaces. Okay, so once it's uploaded my source I'm going to now select that so I'm just going to make sure that's the only source selected. Again I'm going to go back to audio overview and this time I wanted to debate key issues in the article. Again I'm going to add some instructions here that say ensure that data privacy and equality of access and potential misuse are key parts of the debate. And you'll always have specific parts that you wanted to focus on. Here, I'm just making sure that even though it comes back with the main parts of the article, I wanted to focus on these specific three parts. And we're going to keep it on the default, and then we're going to hit generate. So now you can see we've got our brain computer interface debate on the one source. And if we look at the podcast that's come back with, you can see it's 18 minutes. So you can see the varying timings of these different podcasts. You can also see that this one's a debate. This one's a deep dive. This is the brief overview. And if we play this podcast. In ethical literature on BCIs, it enumerates these issues extensively covering personhood, autonomy, privacy, justice, responsibility. And you'll see that it was actually able to really focus on the topics that I asked it to in the instructions. So for example, if we look at this part of the debate. This lack of actionable guidance is a major concern for me. Consider the deep worries surrounding data privacy, for instance. VCIs are, quote, capable of direct extraction of information from the brain, meaning a user may be unaware of the extent of information that is being obtained. So you can see this actual ability to customize the information into your podcast and taking the article and then asking it to position it as a debate and then adding the specific features that we want in that debate, like data privacy. And it's been able to handle all these instructions to come back with a debate that really tackles these topics that I'm focusing on. So this can transform the way that you actually interact with your sources. And then what you'll notice here as well is that you've got this interactive mode. So if we click on on that. And what will happen here is that as the podcast is playing, it gives me the opportunity to join the podcast and ask any specific questions that I might have on a particular topic. So for example, plenary field, extracting the most important sort of nuggets of knowledge and insight. Say, so, oh yeah, let's hear it. So I'd like to know what are the main key themes that you're going to be tackling in this deep dive? That is such a great question. Yeah, that's perfect. We actually have a few key areas we're excited to explore. We want to explain how these incredible systems actually work. You know, the intricate science behind them. And crucially, we'll also peek into the ethical considerations and future possibilities. Okay, so you can see that you can just jump in into any part of that conversation, ask your questions, elaborate on specific areas, ask for examples, ask it to look at an opposing point of view. So you're really not only listening to that podcast, this in that deep dive but you're actually interacting with the information as well so i really like this interactive feature edition now if we look into the video overview if we click on that again you can see that it's now integrated over 80 languages that i can now use to create my video and not only that i can also specify and customize the kind of information that i want it to focus on so for example if you want it to focus on a specific use case or a specific source or a specific structure for your video just added a few things like add real world examples, cover current applications in healthcare and accessibility, and then add future possibilities. And then I'm going to use all these sources to generate my video overview. Okay, we can now play our video. To really get what this all means, I have to tell you this one incredible story. Okay, so picture this. It's 2002, and we meet a man named Jens Naman. After years of living in total darkness, he was part of a revolutionary experiment. He received an implant one of the very first commercial brain-computer interfaces that was wired directly into his visual cortex. 
So you can see how interesting that video is and you can just imagine the potential that it has for teaching a class, for explaining different concepts. It not only produced the video from our extensive sources, but it followed the instructions again. It started off with a really exciting story about what's happening. And then you can see how it will build on the different aspects in the video. And the result? Well, it was mind blowing. Almost immediately after the surgery, he could perceive light well enough to slowly but successfully drive a car around a parking lot. Now think about that. He wasn't seeing with his eyes, he was seeing with his brain. And that, right there, is the incredible promise of brain-computer interfaces. And then you can see how then it connects this story to the main concepts and themes that we have in our sources. So that begs the question, right? How on earth is this even possible? Okay, and then it goes on to structure the video. We can see that this is the first point, Minds and Machines Unite. It's now going into the process of how this actually works. And as we go through the video, you'll see that this explainer video has actually done a really good job. So this is something that I definitely encourage you to try in order to explain complex concepts. And the other amazing thing, as we mentioned, is that it's able to do this overview in over 80 languages. So if you wanted to have this overview in Indonesian, for example, or you can give it to some students in Spanish or give it to some colleagues working in a different language. So this language feature really does make a difference. And some of the additional features that are really interesting is that if you come up here to share button, you can see that actually share this notebook with people or groups. And it's similar to what you get with your Google Drive features. So then you can also add a welcome note here that will allow you to give people some information on this specific notebook. You can also decide how you want people to access this notebook, whether it's restricted or anyone with the link. And you can also specify whether viewers will have access to the full notebook or they can only interact with the chat. And also, if you come up here, you can see that there's an analytics button so you can see who's actually interacting with this notebook. Now you have to share this with at least four other users before you have some analytics information and the chat has to been active within the past seven days. So once you have that, you can actually see who's interacting with the notebook. Really useful additions and features with Notebook LM. The unbelievable thing is that this is all made free by Google. So if you haven't had the chance to explore this yet, I really encourage you to head over to Notebook LM and give all these features a go. I hope you found this video useful and see you in the next one.